It's obvious the security lights would set off an alarm. I needed to find somewhere to hide or the guards would kill me. According to Mr. Sultan, this was the switch that would open the laser door to Mr. Logan's cell block.
Mr. Silton seemed to think this would open the cell block door. Luckily, he was right. Surprisingly, Mr. Logan's cell was locked, but, thanks to my speedy brain, I was able to hack it in seconds. Mr. Logan was not pleased to see me. No one ever was. But I couldn't work out why. However, when I mentioned Mr. Silton, he soon cheered up. We quickly made our way outside. Although I wasn't sure about Mr. Logan's stealth techniques, they were quite different from mine. But, someone must have noticed Mr. Logan was missing. As, with a bright flash, we were soon attacked. This still wasn't the plan, said Mr. Silton as he insisted he was okay, and that, no, I didn't need to clean up the trail of blood. He did however urge me to take care of the huge tank bearing down on us. into the van. Mr. Logan and Mr. Preston took out large guns as Mr. Silton gave me some driving software. It basically explained that one foot pump made the van go and the other one signaled Mr. Logan and Preston to fire their guns.
help that all the bullets fired led to non-fatal wounds, but statistically that was incredibly unlikely. Strangely, I felt too excited and relieved to care. Mr. Silton winced as he clutched his bleeding shoulder and explained how you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. I think broken eggs meant dead people. Sometimes, he said, you have to do whatever it takes to survive, even if that means killing. But not innocent people, said Mr. Logan as he stared straight ahead. Eventually, I asked Mr. Logan what he had done to end up in prison, but he just continued staring out of the window. Mr. Preston smiled as he said, I suppose someone should explain. He told me when the war started, he and Mr. Silton had avoided conscription, but Mr. Logan was called up. His unit's first orders were to sweep through a huge urban area, killing anything that moved. The only trouble was, hundreds of refugees had recently taken shelter there. The generals knew that those people were there, said Mr. Preston, but they couldn't have cared less. This isn't the time for another one of your conspiracy theories, interrupted Mr. Silton, although this obviously annoyed Mr. Preston, he continued explaining how Mr. Logan and another man deserted, and, after a poor attempt to hide in a wooden vaulting horse, the pair of them were caught at gunpoint on a train, whilst trying to speak rudimentary German. Mr. Logan guided us down a small side street as Mr. Preston complained that he needed the toilet. Mr. Silton asked why we were taking the scenic route while he was trying not to bleed to death. But Mr. Logan gave Mr. Silton a quick glance. You're fine, he said with the faintest of smiles. 